Okay, guys, I am so excited to share this with you because this is where you're going to literally find out everything you need to know about what's next for Fannie Willis. This is Ashley Merchant. She is the uh, lead attorney uh, in this disqualification hearing. She's the one who broke and basically blew the lid on this whole corruption with Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade, the fraudulent um, forfeiture funds, uh, the hiring of Nathan Wade, the trips, the text messages, the lying under oath, everything. She is the one who initiated this. And she's also going to answer amazing. She does this amazing interview that I'm not so sure so many people have watched or else it's kind of buried in a bunch of you know, hubaloo, she answers every single question. I mean, some of the stuff that she says is just jaw dropping. You're going to find out everything you need to know about what's going to happen in the coming weeks. As of this recording, March 23rd, 2024, this is brand spanking new. You're going to love this. Okay. This first question that she answers here is Ashley Merchant. What I love about this is you're hearing it from the horse's mouth. You're not hearing it hearsay or YouTubers like me or other uh, media personalities who are just kind of, it's not based on conjecture. This is coming from the actual main individual besides the Pitbull Sadow who is involved. And in this answer right here, watch how she answers what can happen next. Okay. After Fannie Willis is still allowed to be on the case. But the Georgia State Senate, remember Bill Cowsert, what could they do if they find misconduct? Listen to this. Well, they can, they're actually looking at a couple different things. They're looking at changing laws. If there's any laws that are in place that they need to amend or change, um, they can also remove her from office. Our governor just signed a law that now has oversight over district attorneys. And so they actually can remove her from office. That's a law that's going into effect this summer. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of investigations coming. Um, there's a lot of information that wasn't necessarily relevant to my motion that right. I wasn't able to bring in court, but that other agencies are also investigating this this new law is going into effect this summer you saw my last video where fanny cash money g willis is trying to get this trial started by august which a lot of experts and she's going to answer this question as well oh my god this is such a good interview i think so many people miss this interview there's a lot of um back and forth and it's kind of buried in a long form video but i'm so glad i found it here's uh ashley merchant uh responding to and i think it's the very first time she's ever been asked like hey ashley you know you've been called a liar you've been attacked online for basically doing your job and doing your job really really well and uncovering this ruthless criminal cash money g willis and all of her uh criminal enterprises and taking advantage of taxpayers and really the people the constituents of fulton county listen to how she responds to this she she's uh basically you know is she vindicated that the fact that judge mcafee ordered at least one of them at least he said there is i still am not happy with mcafee's decision he should have disbarred uh, uh fanny willis he should have disqualified her and dismissed the entire case but he's not going to do that and i think a lot of people uh you know quite accurately anticipated that but check this out Yes. Oh, definitely. I mean, I was called a liar so many times, but every stage of the process, I was vindicated because everything was proven in court and all of the sources of my information were finally verified. And so everyone actually finally knows that those calls of me being a liar were not accurate. This is so good right here, Nez Nation. Listen to this. I love how she responds to this because she doesn't get emotional, but essentially we all were there when Cash Money G. Willis, I went live uh, and she acted like a complete unprofessional uh, fool in court, uh, acting like she, you know, has no right to be called a district attorney. She's a complete DEI hire. Uh, she's a complete DEI appointment. And it, it showed it was very, very evident in her unprofessionalism, in her decorum, in her impropriety on so many levels. And listen to how this brilliant woman, Ashley Merchant, responds to this uh, when asked, how did you feel about the way that she stormed into court, et cetera, et cetera. Listen to this. This is so good. Listen closely to what she says. 
I mean, at that point, I was surprised that she came in. Um, but I would want to defend myself if someone had made allegations that I was claiming was false. Sure. What surprised me was that she didn't bring anything to actually back it up. So if someone had accused me of wrongdoing, I'm going to bring my phone. I'm going to bring my text messages. I'm going to bring my bank records. So that surprised me that she didn't bring any actual proof. We just were, were stuck with her word that she paid back these these transactions in cash. I would have brought transaction slips. I would have brought a lot of information if I had planned on taking the stand. Um, but it definitely surprised me. And, I, and, you know, we're not supposed to be watching the proceedings mm -hmm. as a witness when they're going on. The fact that she knew exactly when to come in, um, you know, I got to ask her about that on the stand, but it appeared as though she had been watching the proceedings. So that was a little bit surprising as well. So, I mean, it's it, no proof. Where are the text messages? This, no, you're a liar. Remember, she's like, yeah, this is a lie. This is a lie. You're all a liar. But where's the proof? If you if you want to defend yourself and you storm into court when you're, I mean, you weren't even slated to testify that day and you cause the, uh, the pussycat McAfee to walk out of the court uh, and you're calling everybody a liar and you're acting so vile. I mean, it just it's a complete rebuke to professionalism. And uh, where's the proof then? If you're going to defend yourself on national television in one of the biggest make or break cases for your career, why don't you bring proof? Why don't you bring the text messages? Why don't you bring bank statements, financial documents, et cetera, et cetera? She doesn't bring any of that. You know why she doesn't bring any of that? Well, Nez Nation, you and I both know why she didn't bring that. Here's uh, Miss Merchant responding to how she wasn't supposed to watch the, the hearing. She's lied multiple, multiple times. She's lied infinite amount of times. Listen to her response to this. I mean, I think the judge pointed that out in his order. You know, he talked about her demeanor on the stand. That's not what um, I think you would expect to see from the sitting district attorney, from a lawyer on the stand. Um, I understand she was defensive, but being defensive is one thing. Bringing proof, bringing evidence to support your claims, that's a whole different story. And then just really lashing out the entire time at how angry you are um, for being victimized, in her words. Hmm. Um, you know, that was a little bit surprising. Okay, here's the good stuff, Nez Nation. Oh, my God. This is so good. This case is so far from over. This hearing is so far from over. Fanny Cash Money G. Willis, I, 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 I don't want to jinx it. I'm going to knock on wood here. But I just feel like that McAfee, we talked about this. The fact that he left enough flexibility in his order for the appeal to go through, which he approved. The certificate of review, we talked about that live. Pitbull Sadow. Listen to what she says here. She talks about the forfeiture funds and new leads. Perk your ears up, turn up the volume, listen closely. Yeah, so there's a lot of different funds that the district attorney gets. They get federal funds, they get state funds, and particularly what you were asking about is forfeiture funds. That's when the government takes someone's property or takes someone's money. Um, and then the district attorney has those funds and they're able to use them. The thing is the law has very specific requirements for how you can use those. And so she's getting federal forfeiture funds, money, and that is being used to pay Nathan Wade. Mm -hmm. we've, we've tracked over $100,000 in payments to him just from forfeiture funds. We're not allowed to pay lawyers through forfeiture funds. She essentially stole government taxpayer money, state uh, level money from the taxpayers to pay her boyfriend, Nathan Philandering Wade, who has zero qualifications to be the special prosecutor on this case. And then uh, what did he do with that money? She said, well, you got to take me to Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to make it because cash money, a G, is going to end up behind bars, in jail, incarcerated forever. Oh, I can't wait. So here's the response. Check this out. This is, and I don't even know if it's ever been flat out said before anywhere. I know we've kind of alluded to it many times. Here is the big break. How did it all start? How did it all happen? How did you hear about this? How did this corruption and how did you blow the lid on this? Where did it all begin? Listen to who she points out. Remember Dr. I don't recall? 
Check this out. That came from Nathan Wade's best friend and law partner. So at the time, they were law partners, and he represented him in a divorce proceeding, which when he told me this tip, I didn't even know he represented him in the divorce proceeding. I had no idea. I thought they were just law partners and friends. But he's the one that tipped me and another one of the attorneys off and started talking about all of the different things that he had witnessed. And so we started investigating and follow up and, and do you know things called open records yeah. requests and talk to other witnesses and sort of verify all that information. So Mr. Mr. Terrence Bradley, Dr. I don't recall where Sadow, remember the pit bull grilled him and said, Mr. Bradley, you said absolutely. When she said, did the affair start before they said, he responded in that text message, absolutely, which is not a speculative word. God, I love the pit bull. I know you guys know I'm, I'm obsessed with the pit bull. We're going to have him on the show, I promise. Um, I'm going to try to get Ashley Merchant too. Um and then he, what did he say in court? He said, uh, I was just speculating. That's not a speculative word. You are an L-L-I, L-L-H, a lion, lion, heathen. That's what you are. You're an L-L-H, a lion, lion, heathen. This one's so good, Nez Nation. This is Ashley Merchant responding to the link between the White House and this case. You guys remember we did the Kamala? Kamala is like the grand wizard of this whole thing. She has, I think she has a definitive position in the Obama consortium. It's still Obama, who I think is really pulling the levers here. Obama, Pelosi, Schumer, uh, the whole just gaggle of them, maybe even Weasel Dick Schiff. Um, but in response to the connection from the horse's mouth, White House and this case with Fannie Cash Money G, listen to this. Oh, there's definitely a link. I mean, a lot of the billing records show that, you know, Nathan Wade was reimbursed for trips to Washington, D.C., um, that he met with, with J6 counsel. Mm -hmm. He met in um, Athens. He met in Washington, D.C. I also got records from the White House showing that not only Miss Willis went there, but other people in her staff went to the actual White House. So they, you know, they have tracking data on who enters the White House, how long they're there. I was able to find all of that information. So there was quite a bit of information linking this back to dc Shh, all these trips why are you going to washington why are you going to meet kamala there's all all of this is documented in the georgia senate committee subpoena of ashley merchant which we went live and showed the real gist of that uh the, she showed quite explicitly in great detail all of the documentation the hours the meetings the times how long they were there you see this is the this is the sign of a conscientious professional, somebody who supplies data, proof, not just conjecture, not just, it's all a lie, it's all a lie. No, you're all a lie. You're coming after me because I'm black. We got to stop this DEI woke mind virus parasitic infection. This is all a byproduct of woke DEI. That's what this is all is. Fannie Willis, Letitia James, Kamala, affirmative action president Obama, who essentially took the country down the darkest path we've seen in over 250 years. Um, this is this is what you see when you see a professional. Now, this part I love. Okay, I mean, there's so much. I mean, tell me this is, if you're loving this, give me a yeah in the comments, just a capital yeah in the comments. And then type in justice too, because we need justice uh, oh, this is ridiculous. This is all a political witch hunt. In response to, can she still be disqualified? What can happen next? Listen to what she says here. I mean, I definitely think she could be disqualified. We've got this new commission in Georgia that's looking, hopefully looking into this, and they could disqualify her. There's a lot of other avenues that the judge even outlined in his order. Lots of other people are looking at this. She's facing re-election. She's got two opponents right now. So there's a lot of other checks and balances that are in place. Plus, more information can come forward, sure. and we are continuing to investigate. Okay, she's asked pointedly right here, what are your thoughts on the notion that the Democrats are targeting Trump. Listen to what she says about this. I think that it's at this point, it's in excess. And there are a lot of people out there that are waiting for their day in court. And I think they should get their day in court. There's a lot of people in civil cases that cannot get trials until 2028. I mean, we're regularly getting trial dates for 2028, 2029. Why? Because the docket is being crowded with other cases. So I think there's an issue of judicial economy. Other defendants are entitled to their day in court. So I just think at this point, we've got to look at the big picture and start to think about judicial economy and think about the rest of 
of the American public that actually wants to get into the court system. I just I, I, I think that that is some of the best information. It's some of the best um, reporting that is not from hearsay. It's not just from another media personality or YouTuber, etc. Uh, I just really love that it comes from her actual visceral involvement, engagement, legalese, and experience with this case. I mean, she's the one. Besides the pit bull say out, she's the one. So I just think it's so interesting how she says there, there could be so much more coming up. There could be more testimony. There could be more appeals. There could be more information, more intelligence, more testimony. We don't know. It could all keep coming out. And you know your boy Nez is going to keep you informed. I'm going to give you all the latest breaking up-to-date info on this case. We're tracking it since day one, pretty much. It is so phenomenal. And I love how the fact that she said, you know, um, that this is this is excessive. It's excessive. What that Letitia James is doing, Fanny Cash Money G, what Judge Ergeron, whatever his name is, he sounds like a Gargamel, but Judge Gargamel, I'm going to call him, that's his new nickname, Judge Gargamel. What Judge Gargamel is doing, I mean, these are, it's excessive. I mean, there's, it doesn't take a, um, uh, it doesn't take, this isn't like a partisan thing. It just takes a little common sense and practicality and logic to understand that this is in excess. Wow, beautiful interview. I, I highly recommend you watch this over and over again. Share it out with as many people as you know. I think this is so terrific. Moving forward, there's so much more that can happen. I feel so much more confident, and I felt so refreshed hearing from Miss Merchant um, that uh, justice might actually get served to Cash Money G because McAfee really didn't do anything except doing an either or. And of course, we knew Cash Money G wasn't going anywhere. But I like that he left enough language with the odor of mendacity and the appearance of impropriety that allowed for Sadow to appeal. And there's so much more to come. But I want to throw this off to you, Nez Nation. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about this? Isn't this so cool? I mean, I'm, I, I'm happy because, you know, we've seen so much injustice towards this man and our former president. So much injustice and witch hunt going all the way back to 2019, 2018 with the, with the Russia hoax. And it's just absolutely absurd how much billions of taxpayer dollars, energy, time, and resources has been wasted on essentially a Banana Republic-style election interference campaign. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. Uh, and so I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know. As always, I try to respond to all the comments it's literally impossible because we have so many. So members get first priority. Super chats, super stickers get first priority. Consider becoming a member. It only costs you a cup of coffee, one cup of coffee for an entire month to support the truth, support your country. Consider becoming a member. I'm going to do a lot more perks. You get badges. You get uh, special shout outs and live streams. You get emojis, special things that you can utilize during our live streams, which we've got a lot more of those coming, plus exclusive content. Consider doing that. As always, if you made it this far, make sure you subscribe to our free newsletter. It's in the pinned comment. It's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. Uh, it's in our show notes and our description if you're listening or watching on the podcast or Rumble. But in the pinned comment, all you got to do is click on that link and then you're going to see the option for newsletter, free newsletter. Click on that. Give us your best email and you'll never miss out on live, breaking, up-to-date information, news, current stories, top stories that mainstream media won't let you know that all these networks will never, ever talk to you about because it doesn't fit the narrative. But your boy Nez has got you covered. So make sure you subscribe to that. Uh, check out these videos. If you haven't seen these, check out these videos I published very, very recently, especially yesterday. Check out these videos right here. Subscribe. And as always, God bless you, your family. God bless America. And I'll see you soon.